Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome to a Saturday edition of Inside Arsenal. It's a weekend and I hope wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world, you're having a very good start to that weekend break. Of course, still got 24 hours until Arsenal are in action, so we're going to have to watch everyone play today. Hope some results go away. Come on, Luton. I think everyone's going to be saying, can they pull off a surprise against Spurs? Spurs go top of the table if they win today. That is not a nice uh, prospect at all. But hopefully, even if they do, Arsenal can get three points. They need tomorrow to move back to the top of the table. First time since last season. Of course, if they're going to do that, then they're going to have to end this miserable, miserable run against Manchester City. 12 defeats in a row in the Premier League, home and away. Arsenal have suffered against City, but there is a silver lining, of course. Arsenal did win the Community Shield in the, uh, in the summer, just a few, well, a couple of months ago, really. Maybe it was penalties, but still, they did win that game. So hopefully that gives them the psychological boost they needed to really kick on tomorrow and make a bit of a statement. Can't wait for that game. So we're going to talk about that in today's episode. We'll look at what Mikel Arteta has been saying. We'll talk about Bukai Saka, of course, because we have to talk about Bukai Saka and his injury. Will he be fit? Looks like he might, which is, a uh, well, it's a boost, but it's probably pretty scary as well. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Got plenty of questions as well. So let's get cracking. Okay, Bukai Saka. Now, Mikel was speaking about him quite a bit in the press conference yesterday afternoon, talking about his... Uh, the injury, his fitness, that sort of stuff. You can understand there was lots of questions fired his way on fitness. He said he's in contention. We'll see how he progresses from here to Sunday. Obviously, he had to leave the pitch against Lons. It's never good news. Let's see how he recovered. He was asked, you know, what is the injury? Can you tell us exactly what it is? The hamstring, whatever. And he said, I'll leave that to the doctors. Uh, and again, he said, look, he's in contention. That's it. I'm not a doctor. That is what they told me. Then um, he said that he's been in conversations with Gareth Southgate about Saka and the Arsenal are. Uh, yeah, so in dialogue with the England medical team about wh whether he's going to be fit, you know, what sort of minutes he should play during the international break if he does go away. Now, since this press conference, news has started to emerge. Sammy Mottbell at the Mail, uh, Gary Jacob as well at the Times, saying that Saka has been declared fit for tomorrow's game against City, which is exciting, stroke scary, as I said, because, you know, I just said... I, I, it worries me risking a player with a hamstring issue against Manchester City or well, against anyone. It doesn't matter if it's against City or against anyone. You know, hamstrings are very dodgy when you're, a, well, when you're any sort of footballer, let alone a pacey winger who relies on their acceleration and that sort of sudden burst of pace to get away from his man. Um, you know, what suddenly a hamstring can go and something that could have been a couple of week problem can turn into a couple of months problem. And that is a bit of a worry. But... You know, if he has been medically cleared again by all the medical staff and the doctors and he is fit, then that will be a big, big boost to Arsenal because you know, Arsenal's chances of beating Manchester City are going to dramatically increase if Bakaya Saka's in that team. No doubt about it. You can play him on the right. You can keep Capo Jesus as a striker. And, you know, Bakaya Saka is Arsenal's main man. Most of the goals that Arsenal score are either scored by or set up by Bakaya Saka. That's just a fact. And... If he's in that team against City tomorrow, then Arsenal got a much better chance of winning. So, yeah, it is exciting. If he is fit, it is a boost, no doubt about it. But it's all, I think we're all going to be watching that. If he does start tomorrow, we're all going to be sitting there, fingers crossed. Every time he gets a ball, every time he attacks the fullback, every time he sprints, I think we're all just going to be nervously waiting, hoping that that hamstring doesn't go. There's talk that the dialogue with Arsenal and England is kind of centering around the fact that if he does play for Arsenal at the weekend and then he does link up with England, that he won't play in the first game of the international break, which I think is on Friday. I think it's Friday or it might be Saturday against Australia, but then which is a friendly. But then he will potentially be available for the Italy game on the Tuesday night at Wembley, uh, which kind of makes sense because that gives him a little bit of a break. And then obviously come back for the really important game, the Italy game as well. But it's all going to be monitored. There'll be more assessments made of Bukayo Saka today. The last training session will be today. Then Arsenal will go um, and... And then the decision will be made. But looks like Saka could well be fit to play Manchester City. And as I said in recent videos, I had kind of made my peace with the fact that he wasn't going to be available. So, yeah, good news in a way, but pretty nerve wracking news as well. Let me know what you guys think. You know, would you play him? Would you take, would, would you risk him? And I suppose it has to be a risk. Would you risk him in this game against Manchester City? Let me know, as always, in the comments below. 
Um, so on the record against Manchester City, Mikel was asked about it. He said, look, we aren't looking back for sure because there were different players participating in those games. But we know one thing is for certain that we're going to have to be at our best. We have to be our best in every department for 100 minutes. Then we have a chance. He was asked if it was a season defining game. And he said, no, it would be a big boost, obviously, energy and confidence wise. But apart from that and the points, nothing else. Pep Guardiola was speaking in his press conference and he said exactly the same. He doesn't think it'll be a season defining game. I don't think it will be a season-defining game. Obviously, it's still so, so early. But I think for Arsenal especially, if they can win this, it might not be season-defining, but it would be absolutely huge what it would do psychologically to the players. You know, you saw what that Community Shield win against City meant to them, even though that was a penalty shootout. Just the fact that they managed to get one over Manchester City after so much pain against them in recent years, so many defeats, just being able to sort of celebrate that win in the community shield meant a lot to them they all spoke about it in the immediate aftermath I remember an interview of Aaron Ramsdale on the pitch afterwards saying that it was a big psychological boost but if they could do it in the league they could play City in the league beat them in the league it would just be massive for belief for confidence and you know not least the fact it would take them above City in the table and take them top of the Premier League which would be a big big boost as well so it is a huge game that no matter what way you look at it I think it's a bigger game for Arsenal than it is for Manchester City I don't really think there's any doubt about that. I think what it would mean to the team if they won. You know, if City beat Arsenal, it's just another win against Arsenal. It'd be a huge win because they're against a title rival, but it would just be another win for them, something that they're very, very used to. But for Arsenal to do it, I think it would mean so, so much more than just three points. It would be a huge thing for them. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm already getting nervous just thinking about it. Um Team news-wise, coming out of Manchester City, obviously there's no Rodri. We know that. Um, Pep Guardiola has been speaking about that. He also ruled out John Stones. He said that Stones wasn't going to be fit to play. Stones was on the bench in midweek in their Champions League game at RB Leipzig. He didn't come on. But Guardiola, surprisingly, really, has absolutely seems to have ruled him out at this game at the weekend. And he's not ready. He's not going to play. Now, whether that's mind games, we'll find out at about 3.30 tomorrow afternoon when the team news comes out. But Pep was very, very adamant in those quotes during yesterday's press conference that John Stones wasn't going to be available for this game, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. Obviously, there's no De Bruyne um, either, but no Rodri because of that ban. It's the last game of his ban. Pep was asking, you know, how are you going to replace Rodri? Because they have missed him. There's absolutely no doubt about it. I think, obviously, they lost at um, Nor uh, Norwich. <laughs> they lost at Wolves. Um, they'd lost at Newcastle in the Carabao Cup as well. He said, look, we will see. We'll start today to talk with my staff. This afternoon, I'll analyse and prepare for the game. Rodri is maybe best or in the top two or three best holding midfielders in the world. Like I said, he's not there and we have to find a solution with our players and how we want to play. Imagine what they can do at the moment. In my mind, the player is out and I don't think about it. I'm thinking about the solution that we have. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, that, that midfield battle is going to be absolutely huge. I spoke about it in yesterday's um, episode that for me personally, especially with Rodri out, I think Arsenal got a real chance to dominate in that midfield. If you play Party and Rice together, I think you've got a really good chance of doing that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what City do. Do they go with a Calvin Phillips? I doubt in a game of this magnitude. Obviously, they've got Nunes as well, who struggled against Wolves last week. They spent big money on him. Um, but, it, you know, he's an option in that midfield, probably more an attacking one. You can drop in uh, Kovacic, obviously, to play in that sixth role. I don't think that's his best role, but he can play there. So they're going to have to work out what they're going to do. We know with Pep that he can spring a surprise. He'll normally think of something pretty out, sort of outside of the box to do in games like this. And he might well do that. John Stones would have been an option. But apparently, if we take Pep for his word, he is not available for this game. So it's, that's something he can't look to do either. So it'll be really interesting. But I do think that midfield battle, like I said, if Arsenal can get on top of that midfield and they can, you know, take advantage of the fact that Rodri isn't there, they could really wrestle control of this game. Um and yeah, I'm intrigued to see what Manchester City do in their tactics. You know, so we saw what they did in the game at the Etihad last season. And to be fair, they did it at the Emirates as well. They were very, very long and direct. They tried to basically cut out the midfield because they were so worried about the Arsenal press and the intensity that Arsenal press with that they just went long, hit the ball long to Haaland and then sort of relied on the flick down to Kevin De Bruyne. Now, obviously, De Bruyne is not there this time. So whether they can play that role or play that tactic quite as well without De Bruyne sort of picking up the scraps that... Um, come from Haaland, we'll have to wait and see. But intriguing battle, I think, tactically, once again, between the two coaches and the two teams shaping up for tomorrow's game. So away from the game quickly, I just wanted to mention this. I'm sure some of you have seen it, but if you haven't, Ben Napper has left Arsenal. 
um, Ben Napper's been Arsenal. Well, he's been at Arsenal for a long, long time, like over a decade, about 13 years. He's been at Arsenal, sort of worked his way through. Most recently, he's been like the loans and pathways manager, um, which was a job that was created a couple of years ago that he stepped into and did really, really well. You know, he sort of managed the players who were all out on loan, stayed really in touch with them, basically developed this new, the, with Edu, the sort of new loan system that Arsenal do in the way they use it. And he's the guy who speaks to the players all the time, stays in touch with them and analyses how they're getting on. Really popular figure at Arsenal. Really popular with the players who have been out on loan that he's managed basically during this loan. Whoever you speak to, um, you know, and I, you know, I've spoken to so many players who've been out on loan over the last few years, I've spoken to lots of agents who work with the players, obviously, who are out on loan. And everyone speaks very glowingly of Ben Napper, but he has left. He's joined Norwich as a sporting director. This is what he had to say yesterday. He said, I'm delighted to be joining Nor Norwich. It's a club I've admired uh, from afar for a long time. My interactions and dealings with the clubs over the years have been very positive. It's a club that I've always left an impression on me. I've been really impressed with how they operate. There are clearly some good foundations already in place. I'm really looking forward to getting started, meeting everyone and contributing to the next chapter of the success of this club. I mean, Arsenal have had dealings with Norwich fairly recently. Napa has. They've been Marquinhos was there recently. Um, Edu sent out an email to um, all club staff yesterday, sort of informing them of Ben Napper's departure. This is what he's had to say. He said, we are so proud that Ben has been appointed sporting director at Norwich City. Of course, we are all sad Ben is leaving us because he's such a top professional and we have enjoyed a great working relationship together. He's been a huge asset to us during his career at Arsenal, where he's developed through our performance analysis teams to become the highly successful loans and pathway manager. Ben has played a key role in the positive development of so many of our men's players over the years, where he has driven a part of our football strategy to give our players the best possible experience to ensure they return to us with enhanced qualities to continue their careers with us or elsewhere. We are proud to have given Ben the opportunities to develop his career and we all wish him the best chap uh, next chapter with Norwich City. So nice words there from Edu. And look, Arsenal are going to miss Ben Napper. I have absolutely no doubt about it. From all the people that I've spoken to, like I said, players, agents, it was always, however, a matter of when, not if, he was going to leave and become a sporting director somewhere. It was clear that's the way that his career was progressing. He obviously wasn't going to get that at Arsenal. So, you know, you've got to move. You've got to move on to progress your career. And this feels like a really good move for us. Uh, for Ben Napper, you're going to a you know, decent club in Norwich. They've struggled a little bit since dropping out of the Premier League. Haven't quite got things right yet. But with him in charge, I do think he's got a very good football brain. He knows how how the game operates really, really well. He's got he's excellent at building um, sort of working relationships with players and agents and things like that. And I think he'll do really well for Norwich and he will be missed. And Arsenal will have to replace him. And Edu has already said in that sort of message he sent out to the club staff that the recruitment process to replace Napa is underway. And it's a really important position at Arsenal. They've got so many players out on loan now. They've really started to expand their loan system and how they operate it. Um, they've had a lot of success with it in the past since Napa has been taken on. Um, has taken on that role and so they need to replace him and they need to get the position right because it's a very important role at the club so yeah I thought that was a very interesting development that came out yesterday okay just quickly on Ben White's contract um, Mikel was asked about it yesterday he didn't sort of confirm anything as you'd expect but he just reiterated how happy he is with Ben so I'm really happy with Ben he's been really consistent for us I think he's always developing I think he's developed in a great way both as a centre-back and especially as full-back because there were some question marks there as well. I think he's got character of a proper fighter and a character we need in our squad, especially at this level. I'm really happy for that. Look, I've said already my thing on Ben White and contracts. I think it will be signed at some point. I don't think it's going to be an issue with that. You know, Arsenal have been working through very carefully the squad list and Ben White's next on that list and I fully expect Ben White will sign a contract. Uh, I can't say when, but it's just one that I look at from a player's point of view and from the club's point of view. Everyone's happy together. Ben White loves it at Arsenal. Arsenal love Ben White. And I very much think that will be a contract that will be signed sooner rather than later. And I very much hope so as well, because he's such a good player. Such a good player. OK, before I go today, let's quickly go through some questions and comments, shall we? Nick here has got in touch and said, this is the game that we need party for. If that means taking a risk on his fitness, then so be it. This is the biggest contribution we need him to give us this season. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it is a game for Thomas Party. I know... He's not played any minutes since coming back from injury, so he is going to be going into it a little bit cold, but I still think he plays this game for me. I think he's that important. I think he'll have a point to prove as well because he really had a nightmare game at the Etihad in that defeat at the end of last season. Look, everyone did. It was an awful performance from Arsenal, but you know, Thomas Party really struggled in that game. I'm convinced he was struggling with injury, even though it was ne it never came out that he was. Um, 
And yeah, I just think Thomas Partey and Declan Rice in the heart of that midfield could be really, really important for Arsenal in that game if they want to seize control of it. So I agree. I think it is a game for Thomas Partey. Here's one from Grind It Out. He says, City game, do not lose. Start Partey, Rice and Odegaard, but maybe only for 60 minutes for Partey and then rely on Jorginho's experience. Start Raya and Havertz. Try the Raya Tony thing with Jesus snapping up the second balls in the box. This won't be pretty. Do not lose. Yeah, interesting. I mean, my, I, I, I was thinking to myself, and I thought I would play Havertz at the nine. But this was when I was thinking that uh, Bukayo Saka wasn't going to play. Now it looks like Bukayo Saka has got a chance of playing, or potentially might definitely play. Then I think Gabriel Jesus plays at the number nine for me. I think, and um, uh, we just go and Havertz is on the bench. Um, but I can very much see that tactic as well of the sort of long balls, again, sort of cutting things out and getting the ball up to Havertz as quickly as possible and feeding off the scraps potentially. But you do look at City's defence and it's so strong now. You know, it's something that Pep's really changed towards the end of last season that made a big impact that really helped them catch Arsenal at the end of last season because they just didn't concede many goals. And they're just they're very solid defensively now with these four sort of big centres, basically playing four centre-backs at times. Um, or certainly three centre backs at times, and they can, you know, they can win the aerial battles. And as much as Havertz is pretty tall, he's not the strongest. I wouldn't say he's, I know, I've called him physical before, and I keep thinking to myself, I shouldn't really call him physical because although he's big, he's not the most physical player. Um, Kai Havertz. So whether it'd work like that, I don't know. But for me, I'd be playing if Saka's starting, Jesus goes as number nine for me. And, um, but yeah, I absolutely agree with you on party rice and Odegaard in midfield. And I absolutely agree with you. It's a do not lose game. I mean, interested to get your take on it. You know, if Arsenal draw this game, I don't think that's a disaster of a result, but I don't know what you guys think. But given how Arsenal have done against City, given it's been 12 defeats in a row, if Arsenal draw tomorrow, I don't think it's the worst. You don't, you know, City don't get further away from Arsenal. It will be a disappointing because you'd love to win the home game against City and what it would mean, it would be massive. But I, if we do draw tomorrow, I wouldn't come away from the Emirates absolutely devastated at that result by any means. OK, here's one from Hanzu Siki. I, or Siku, sorry if I've got that wrong. Says, I don't think City will drop off in quality that much because of Rodri's absence. Rico Lewis and Mateus Nunes are playing pretty well. Akanji did also did well in midweek. So the team is really on a different level. Arsenal's entire team must be switched on for the entire 90 minutes to stand a chance. A double pivot with Declan Rice and party is most welcome. Yeah, look, Man City got lots and lots of options. I do think that they do drop off, though, without Rodri. And I think the stats back that up. You know, since he's been in uh, out of the game, they've lost two games in the league. Uh, not in the league, they've lost two games in domestic competitions with Newcastle in the Cup. And... Um, uh, the Wolves game last week. And I thought Nunes did struggle against Wolves. I think he got hooked at half-time, actually, Nunes, didn't he? I think Akanji's a fantastic player. I really do. I think whatever position he plays in, he plays really, really well. I've been really impressed by Akanji. And they are going to be strong. They're not going to suddenly come to Arsenal and be a poor team just because Rodri's not there. But I think they definitely will have a drop-off in quality because Rodri's that good. The other players are good, but Rodri's great. He really is, really is great. As much as I can't stand the guy, and he's one of the players who annoys me the most in the entire Premier League, um, he is a hell of a good footballer and very, very important to Manchester City. And last one before we go, here's one that says, uh, and this was in reply to what I was talking about with Pedro Neto yesterday when I was answering a question if I fancied him at Arsenal. And I said very much so, because I do like Pedro Neto and uh, I think he's a very good player. Joseph said, Wolves will be stupid to sell Pedro Neto in January when like eight or so other teams, they are fighting for to stay up summer maybe. And this is what I, I do kind of agree, Joseph. I think you're right. Um, I just, I'd be very, very surprised if Wolves cash in on Neto in January just because of if they are battling against relegation, which looks like they might be. I think they'll be all right. I did predict, I think I predicted them to go down at the start of the season, but the sort of form and of some of the of the promoted teams is beginning to change my mind that all three promoted teams might just go straight back down pretty comfortably. But um, if Wolves are in and around the mix for relegation in January, why would they even consider selling Pedro Neto? It just wouldn't make any sense. He's got a long-term contract. They're not under any pressure to sell unless someone put in a ridiculous offer in January. And I think they'd be like, look, he's staying until the summer end of. So I'd be very, very surprised if Arsenal uh, managed to get him out of Wolves or anyone managed to get him out, out of Wolves in, in January. I think it'd be, it would be much more uh, likely in the summer. All right, everyone, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching or listening on this very warm, sunny Saturday in the UK. It's going to be even warmer tomorrow, 25 degrees in North London for what is going to be a huge, huge game at the Emirates. I will be there. I can't wait for it. 
Although I know that I'm going to be incredibly nervous when the game does get underway. Proper, proper big match feel at the Emirates. So looking forward to that. If you're there tomorrow, be loud. Create one hell of an atmosphere. If you're watching it anywhere else around the world, then hope you enjoy the game and I hope you get to celebrate three very important points for the Arsenal. Until then, everyone, have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.